Let's talk about tattoos, sin, and salvation. A lot of Christians are worried about their sin and what's sin, what's not sin. And I'm not perfect. I probably said more than some of you watching this, but I can show you something. What I can tell you about sin is the more you worry about it, the more you attract it. Some people can't even come in God's presence because of their sins. They feel like they can't worship God, read the Bible or anything. Let me ask you something. Sincerely answer this question. Do you think sin is more powerful than Jesus? No. So why do we focus on sin more than we focus on Jesus? Why do we allow sin to take us away from the Lord? Are these tattoos more powerful than Jesus? No. A lot of you text me and tell me to talk about tattoos, tattoos, tattoos. What the Bible say about tattoos? And if you think it's a sin for you, don't get it. But I'm going to get it because I know it's not a sin for me. Yeah, in the Old Testament, in I think Leviticus, it talks about um, you shouldn't cut yourselves for the dead or tattoo yourselves. It's talking about for the dead. Because people used to mark themselves back then for other gods. And it says in 1 Corinthians 6.20, KJV, which is the rawest version, it says, and ye are bought with a, with a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit. In your body, not on, in. Why in your body? Because God cares more about your soul than this, this flesh. Even if that verse does mean glorify God on your body, even he's talking about your skin. These tattoos, this is a scripture. This is Psalms 35 uh, verses 1 and 2. Psalms 35 is hard, by the way. This is this says faith. This right here, this is a cross. Every tattoo I have glorifies God. Maybe one day God knows that you'll get a job in the future and they won't accept you if you have tattoos. So you feel a conviction, you feel a burden. But I don't. You know, many people even believe that Jesus himself had a tattoo. Revelation 19, 16 says, on his robe and on his thigh, he had a name written. It said, King of Kings, Lord of Lords. All right, I'm going to ask you guys some questions and answer these sincerely. If a transgender, let's say they find God, they ask for forgiveness, they get saved. Can they still go to heaven even though they're transgender? If somebody tries to hurt themselves, right, and they cut themselves and the cuts heal, can they still go to heaven? If somebody's arm gets infected and the doctor has to cut off their arm, will the person with one arm still go to heaven? Will the doctor that cut off the arm still go to heaven? The answer is yes, 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 yes. Because for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. For whosoever believes in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Or is it whosoever believes in him that doesn't have a tattoo? Whosoever believes in him that has perfect body. You, you see how this the tattoos just... You know, as people of God, we always talk about we're not focused on the cares of the world, but sin is of the world. So in a way, we are focused on the care of the world. You know, the law and the commandments was made so we can know about sin, so we can try to avoid it, not so we can be perfect. Paul says in Romans chapter seven, he says he thanks God for the law. He's glad that God made the law. He said if it weren't for the law, he wouldn't know what sin was. He said, but because he knows the law now, now that he knows what he should be doing, he doesn't want to do it. It's like take a child, right? Take a child and there's an oven and you tell them, don't touch this oven, it's hot. They, don't, they, they probably don't even know what an oven is. But now that you told them that don't touch this oven, it's hot, now they want to touch it. Paul said he does what he shouldn't be doing and he shouldn't do what he does. Let me show you guys something. Romans 14, 23 says, whatever you don't do that's not in faith, it's a sin. So if you don't eat in faith, it's a sin. If you don't drive the, your car in faith, it's a sin. If you, don't, if you think you're not supposed to get getting tattoos and you still get it, you don't get it in faith. It's a sin. In Matthew 22, 37 and 40, Jesus talks about the two greatest commandments you should follow. He said that you love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind. And then he says the second greatest commandment is like it unto it. He said that you love your neighbor as you love yourself. So if you don't love, your, love God with every ounce of being you have in you, it's a sin. If you don't love yourself, it's a sin. If you don't love your neighbor, you love your ex, love your enemy as you love yourself, that's a sin. You see how easy it is to sin? Why did Jesus make those the greatest commandments? Because we like to focus on laws and sin so much. So he gave us something to focus on. He helped us because those two commandments, if we follow those, we don't sin. If you love God with everything you have in you, you won't sin. If you love your neighbor with everything you have in you, like you love yourself, you won't sin. So Jesus was saying, stop focusing on sin. Stop focusing on the commandments. Stop focusing on fear, but focus on love and you will avoid all these things. 
1 John 4 and 18 says, there is no fear in love, but perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. So love broke the law and God is love. So God broke his own law with his own love. You see how perfect and beautiful, like what he did. <sighs> Watch this. John 3 and 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, right? Jesus is the word. And we know that we're in this predicament because Adam sinned and God gave a word and cursed Adam. Now we're here. So it says, for God so loved the world, he gave back his only word. He gave back his word. He took back his word and broke it through love just to say, that is crazy. That wasn't even in my notes. God is so good. See, this is why Christians, the Bible says Christians can't sin because we're supposed to have so much love that we literally can't sin because 1 Peter 4 and 8 says, love covers a multitude of sins. So even when we sin, our love covers it. I am pumped. I don't even know why. But does that mean stay in sin? No, because you're foolish if you stay in sin. This is not a green light to sin. This is why I don't like making messages like these because I feel like people want a green light to sin. No, this is saying that what Jesus did is more powerful than sin. You should feel some type of way when you sin, knowing that God loves you so much and we still do it. It should, it should be a conviction somewhere inside you. So this is not a green light to sin, more like a red light, like a stop sign. So you can stop and focus on your relationship with God and treat it differently. You know, some people can't even love God or convert to Christianity because they feel like he's forcing us to love him. And he's not. Again, John 3, 16, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, whoever believes in shall not perish, but have an everlasting life. It doesn't say, it says if you believe, not if you love him. So you, all you have to, Jesus is saying, all you have to do is accept me and just believe and I'll show you what true love looks like. And think about it. How can you love Jesus before you get saved? You don't even know about him. He's saying, if you accept me, I'll show you what true love is. And we think we haven't seen Jesus, but we have, because if you've seen true love, you've seen Jesus. So don't ever feel like God is forcing you or is unfair. Just leave your sins and let him wash it away. I always think that it's better to be safe than sorry. And not so much as to be safe and sorry from hell, but to be safe and sorry from this thought right here. Imagine this. Everybody close your eyes or don't. So imagine that you died, right? You passed away and you see Jesus, right? And your hands are red. Your hands are really red. You're like, why are my hands red? Red all over. And you see Jesus and he has a beautiful, beautiful face. And he's just tearing up. He's crying, crying, crying. And he, and he looks at you and then he falls down on the floor crying. And then he says, you wasted so much time. He says, so many souls could have been saved. You could have helped me save so many souls. He said, but because you didn't follow the purpose I have for your life, you didn't do it. And then you remember, you remember your family. You remember your friends. You remember your classmates, your teachers, everybody. And then you realize why your hands are red. And Jesus says, you made it, but their blood is on your hands. You shouldn't be afraid of hell. You should be afraid of that.